Okay, so welcome to this first video in the playlist on glucose homeostasis. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the structure of the pancreas. So we're going to talk about the anatomy of the pancreas and also the histology of the pancreas. Okay, right. So we'll start off with the anatomy of the pancreas. So, the pancreas is the topic for this video. Right, so let's start off with the anatomy of the pancreas. So, uh, the pancreas is sort of attached uh, within the C of the duodenum, okay? So it sits within the uh, C of the uh, duodenum. So I'll draw the duodenum first. Okay, so we'll have it nice and curvy here. Okay, so this is going to represent one boundary of the duodenum. Okay like so, oops, and basically the pancreas is going to be sitting within this curve here, so the head of the pancreas is going to be sitting here. Okay, so I'm only drawing a portion of the duodenum, I'm not drawing the whole thing. So here we can imagine that we've cut the duodenum here, and we've cut the duodenum here, and this is the superior portion, and this is the inferior portion. Okay, so this is meant to represent the duodenum, which is the first portion of the small intestine. Okay, right. So now we'll stick the pancreas in, in uh, the middle of this sort of curve of the duodenum. Okay, so let's put the pancreas in then. So we'll start off with the tail of the pancreas, working up through the body of the pancreas, working up now to the neck of the pancreas, and then into the head of the pancreas, which will curve round with the curvature of the duodenum, like so. And then, uh, whoops, that's a little bit thin, but never mind, I can't reverse it now. Okay, and then we've got the rest of it here. Okay, so this is our drawing of the pancreas then, sitting in uh, the curvature of the duodenum. Okay, so this very end portion over here, this is what's known as the tail of the pancreas. Okay, so this is the tail. Uh, the middle bit here, this is the body of the pancreas, okay? Then next up we have the neck of the pancreas, which would be this bit here, okay? And then after the neck, you have the head of the pancreas. And the this portion is going to be the head. This portion down here is going to be a special portion. We'll come to this in a moment, okay? Uh, so this is the head of the pancreas here. So, what's this portion down here? Well, basically, to understand what this portion is, we need to understand the shape of this a little bit better. This, there will be, in, basically, there will be a little sort of um, a, a crease in the surface, basically. It won't be nice and smooth here. Imagine taking your finger and pushing in here to produce a little sort of crack okay and basically a certain uh, vein is going to run in that crack so basically we have a sort of crack here that, that separates the head of the pancreas off from this bit down here and this bit down here is what's known as the uncinate process okay so this is called the uncinate process of the pancreas Okay, and it's separated by this groove. That was the word I was looking for earlier, rather than crack. Uh, this groove between the head and the uncinate process. So there is a groove that lies between the head and the uncinate process. And in this groove, there is going to be a vein, basically. So a vein is going to move in this groove, okay? And that vein will then go behind the neck of the pancreas. So if you can imagine it sort of getting to the end here and then going behind the neck and emerging from behind the neck up here. Okay, so what is this vein here? And I'm going to colour it in in blue uh, to uh, exaggerate the fact that it is a vein. Okay, well basically this is the superior mesenteric vein, often abbreviated to SMV for short. So this is the superior mesenteric vein, and it's one of the key components of the hepatic portal vein. So it's going to go and join with some other veins to make the hepatic portal vein. So this is the superior mesenteric, which means pertaining to uh, the mesentery, or the uh, intestines, okay? And then artery. Oh, sorry, not superior mesenteric artery. Cross that out. Uh, superior mesenteric vein. Uh, and for short, that is the SMV. 
Right, okay, so the superior mesenteric vein runs in this groove between the unsnip process and the head of the pancreas, and it's going to go up and uh, form the hepatic portal vein with a few other veins. Okay, right. Uh, now that we've discussed the uh, superior mesenteric vein, and we've discussed the large structure of the pancreas, what we now need to turn our attention to is the ducts that are within the pancreas. So there is a duct running pretty much the entire way through uh, the pancreas. So here it is. And this is collecting um, Home, well, connecting products from the cells of the pancreas. So an important thing to understand is that the pancreas has two roles. It has an endocrine role, which is that it secretes hormones into the blood, okay? And it also has an exocrine function, which means that it's secreting products into uh, the outside, the outer world, and the intestinal lumen is counted as the outside world. Effectively, our topology, as it's called, is um, a fancy word, homeomorphic, to the topology of a bagel, for instance, the surface of a bagel, okay? Um, so, the tube through the middle of us is considered outside of our body, basically. The epithelium of the gut is basically considered as a boundary, our outer boundary, and you don't count the contents within the intestine as being inside us. It's on the outside. So, uh, the exocrine part of the pancreas is going to be secreting products into the intestinal lumen, and therefore it's secreting them into the outside world, basically. Okay, so this duct here is going to be collecting products from cells of the pancreas, and it's going to be secreting them into the intestine, basically. Okay, so this is called the main pancreatic duct, but it's also got another name, which will understand in a moment, okay? So you, the nor what people nowadays would call this is the main pancreatic duct. Now, basically, uh, our modern terminology has this continuing on, okay, like so, and it, it, and it dumps its contents out into the duodenum here. However, it also has another little um, tube coming off it, Okay, which then also dumps its contents into uh, the duodenum. Okay, and this accessory little duct that comes off the main pancreatic duct. So people would call the main pancreatic duct this entire thing, basically, all the way to where it dumps into um, the duodenum. So this would be counted as main pancreatic duct. All of this would be counted as main pancreatic duct. This little side tube that comes off the main pancreatic duct and also dumps its contents into the duodenum, this would then be called the accessory pancreatic duct. Okay, so this is the accessory pancreatic duct. Now, there are another, there is another naming system for these ducts, okay? Uh, an old naming system. So, the new naming system considers this tube here and this tube to be the same tube, which is all called the main pancreatic duct. I'm sorry that that arrow now points into the lumen of this main pancreatic duct. And then it considers this little side tube here as the accessory pancreatic duct. In the old naming system, this tube here and this tube here were considered one, and this tube here was considered separate. So it's the other way around. This is the tube here, and then this tube comes off the, this tube here. Okay, so what was the old naming system then? So the name for this tube was viewed as one massive great tube in the old naming system was the duct of Santorini. Okay, so the duct of Santorini. Okay, so the duct of Santorini includes this tube, which we now call the accessory pancreatic duct, and it includes most of what we now call the main pancreatic duct, but not this bit onwards here. It includes all of this. So it's the opposite way around to the new naming system. We view this as one great big tube, and then this bit as the bit that comes off, basically. Okay, and uh, this other little duct here that was coming off the duct of Santorini is then called the duct of Verzung. Okay, so this would then be the duct 
of Verzang. So basically, the old naming system and the new naming system are back to front, basically. Okay, so the duct of Santorini, one last time, is the accessory pancreatic duct, plus most of the main pancreatic duct that goes back into the neck, the body, and the tail of the pancreas. And uh, the duct of Verzung is this final portion of what we would now call the main pancreatic duct, which empties out into the uh, lumen of the duodenum. Okay, right. Uh, a few final little pieces of terminology. The holes that you have in the duodenum, which are the, um, the ends of these tubes, basically, of these pancreatic ducts, where they dump out into the lumen of the uh, duodenum, those are called papillae, okay? And the one which is bigger, which is down here, is known as the major duodenal papillae. So from the main pancreatic duct, you then have a hole uh, which leads into the lumen of the duodenum, and this hole is known as the major duodenal uh, papillae, or papilla rather. Papillae is the uh, plural of papilla. Okay, and then this smaller one that is the accessory pancreatic duct exiting uh, the pancreas and going into the duodenum, this is known as the minor pancreatic, uh, sorry, minor duodenal papilla. Okay, so this is the minor duodenal papilla. Right, now one final thing we need to talk about is that uh, the common bile duct actually e um, empties itself onto one of these um, pancreatic ducts, and this is the, ma uh, the, well, the main uh, pancreatic duct. So basically, the common bile duct comes down from the liver up here, so we'll say that this is the uh, common bile duct coming here. And basically, it goes behind the duodenum, okay, and then goes behind the pancreas, and then basically, is this is all happening behind the pancreas at the moment. It will then enter the pancreas, and it will dump its contents into uh, this portion of the main pancreatic duct. So the portion of the main pancreatic duct after the accessory pancreatic duct has come off, okay. So this is all happening behind the pancreas, and then it's going to empty into this portion of the main pancreatic duct here. Okay, and that green uh, tube that I've drawn there is meant to represent the common bile duct. Okay, right. Uh, so that now concludes our discussion of the anatomy of the pancreas. In the next video, what we'll look at is the histology of the pancreas. And so far, we've only really seen uh, stuff relating to the um, exocrine function of the pancreas. When we look at the histology, we'll see the islets of Langerhans, which um, take on the endocrine function of the pancreas.